Yeah. We got we got the top, we got the bottom, and that's it. There is no middle class no more. Right. Your cost of living should not go up if we're making social economic progress because you learn better and better ways to make stuff like cars. They don't lay people off because, you know, they don't right. want to work. They lay them off because they got too many cars. So they've overproduced, and instead of lowering the prices, right, supply and demand until everybody was buying exactly. more cars, they fix the prices like housing. We've got more extra housing in America than ever before in history with homelessness at a higher, what, see what I mean? That's not supply that's, and demand that's, economics. It's, 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 you see it's, what I'm saying? It's price fixing, it's market and I, manipulation. You say, wait, I know you're probably an Obama man, but he no, is I, separating. No, I'm not a socialist. I'm not, I don't believe in taking from others to get, you see what I mean? Right. I believe right. in allowing everybody Great, to have, brother. Yeah. you see what I mean? Is If we're gonna take, if we're gonna make people pay taxes, make it voluntary. For one thing, exactly. and you get to put it where you want it. A flat tax, just like a, like a church. You would say, "Look, I want it earmarked for this, or that, and I want it's voluntary." And then start. If you're going to make people pay, why not start with the guys that are worth tens of billions of dollars, right? Yeah. Am I making any sense? No, you make total uh, sense. And so, you know, I'm not a socialist. But I'm not a communist. Not... I'm actually a free market, supply and demand capitalist guy. <sighs> exactly. That just wants the best for you and your kids, Rob. That's right. That's, I got grandkids. And that's, we got, I got that from God. You see, you talk about God right away. You know that first source. You know that number one opinion that really only counts about you is that one. Him. And then that's the way you go out and love your fellow man is first, you you know, you got that power to cool. do that from him. How do you love your enemy? Do you believe in loving your enemy? you got to love your enemy. You see, now that's powerful. Rob, you're that walking you in got to love your enemy. You're walking in a lot greater power than you realize now. You yeah, understand yeah, that? No, no. I mean, that's a matter of the heart. You're not just saying that. That's you're actually story. embracing that idea, aren't you? Yes. You know, yeah, the, your enemies, you have to be with them. You have to identify with them and see what their point is like isis all that shit. Yeah. you know yeah you're you right. have to understand where they're coming from they they're they're terrorists they're they're but they have a cause they they believe something in their head that's right that's their gig that's your gig like i believe in my head that's my gig you can't force you either beheading people and burning people and whatever amen oh well is that what you think you're going to rule the world by doing that? You ain't. You ain't going to do that. They're going to get what Hitler got. They're going to get their ass kicked. And even at me, I'm a pacifist, but I, hey, I would have paid to go kick Hitler's ass. Yeah. You see, I mean, see, for the right cause, a man will go die and get killed, but, you know, for free. But, you know, see, this is it. We've got dubious warfare, right, that we're really uncertain about. It's like, was well, this the right cause to get involved in? And this is the kind of thing they wouldn't be able to get away with if we had sound currency. You see, if we didn't have people desperate. Robbo, so, come here. This guy talks sense. He's your kind of guy. See, he does. You see what the most imperative thing these people running our lives have to do? They have to maintain poverty because the poverty gives them a way to create uh, uh, chaos. Yeah. They, because crime is a part of that. They know it creates crime because people get financially desperate and they do stupid things. And then it costs you and me 50000 a year to keep them in jail. Do you know story. that? So when you see the homeless, don't look down this on them. This guy knows his shit, Say, you dude. know what? He knows his shit. I mean, if they were criminals, they'd be in jail costing you and me 50 grand a year. And Where's then you got dubious card? warfare. I don't have one. But, you know, and then another thing, Rob, is the debt. How would they put, see, they don't put middle class people in debt. Who's no. going to debt? It always falls on the poor. Yeah. So they need the poverty to be able to debt people. Bam. You wouldn't have national debt, state debt, or individual debt if you just ended poverty and so they cannot tolerate that one they thing. have to have poverty but this is like if you believe in the return to jesus or anything this is what we have to get ready for an end to poverty and how different that's going to be i mean it's not going to end death and disease you see we're still got some serious issues with sin and stuff like that right but we won't have poverty we won't have the high crime rate the dubious war we won't have debt the captives will essentially be set free at some point in history, and it's coming. You know, and there's science behind what I'm saying. I'm not just a, you know, a will, a wistful believer. I'm saying there's concrete evidence you for- You make sense. You know, what it is, it's education. It does make sense, bro. It's not just higher education as defined by the secular system, right? It is education, divine education, and saying, look, people are learning about economics, right? Right away. Rob, you knew about supply and demand economics. You knew right away. Hey. If there's a shortage of something, it becomes more dear, and there's a reason why it might go up in price, okay? But on the other hand, if you keep producing more and more and you keep having excess of that stuff, 
you're pr supposed to be dirt poor, like VCRs in the 80s. Remember when they cost 600 right. bucks? When 600 yeah. bucks was worth a couple thousand, now, and now they're less than 100 bucks for one that's way better. Uh, Remember, computers. we used to have to rent them. Everything. So we've seen deflation there in the trinkets area. But when it comes to the essential human needs like housing, that's all they had to pick on. Was, was one essential was human need, housing. And then it causes what, what I call chain reaction inflation. Stop for a second. <laughs> what was your name? Chris. Chris. Rob. Chris Rob? No, your name is Rob. Yeah. But you, you understand what I'm saying? Chain reaction. So everybody's trying to, you know, they say, wow, my rent just went up. So I got to raise my rent, right. right? So I need a raise. Right. And then people want to say, well, it's the minimum wage workers ask for raises that's going to cause inflation when they want to make it a chicken or the eggs. Get it? Yeah. But really, Which we know first. the cost of living went up True. and the justification for a cola was, right, was the cost of living going up, especially when it was manipulated. It wasn't because we had a drought or a famine in the land or people are lazy. Right. It was because they're manipulating markets and fixing prices where they want. And the government's involved. They're colluding. The government become like a special interest group. Why do they, why do they raise the cost of real estate? Right. Why we do they manipulate get. it? We got to get. Okay, but why do they do it again, Rob? Good because they get what? They get more property taxes. So they get a higher revenue stream. So that gives you the quay bono. That's your bomba. Why they would manipulate, you know, the, Curious the real estate market? Curious George. Oh, I'm with you, brother. I know, but we haven't had a decent president since who? I mean, the last one I actually liked. Reagan. Was, well, Jimmy Carter. Well, Jimmy, Jimmy Carter, was good, but he, he works for Habitat. For, he believes, you know, he believes that housing should be a human right, and yeah. I'm with him. You see, essential human needs should be. FDR. Yeah, housing, he's the one that started it all. Housing. Uh, the dream was Social <laughs> Security, jobs, unemployment. Housing. I agree with that, that, but here's the one of the problems with the C. They set up the social welfare uh, uh, agencies like Section Eight, right? They subsidize housing, but they're really paying the landlord. Section you get what I'm saying? And now you've got the social services agencies, all these people working in those agencies. Their job is in the poverty industrial complex. Right. And now if the poverty goes away, their job security goes away. Think of all exactly. the people involved exactly. in the crime industrial complex whose jobs would be on the line. The attorneys, the jailers, the law enforcement. If war, Eisenhower, there you go. That's, a, that's what Eisenhower's point. Think of the debt industrial complex. 25% of Americans purportedly are employed somehow in the financial services industry whose job is to put you and me and your kids and mine in debt. Huh? How do you like that? Yeah. You see what I mean? So well, without the problems, all these people are doing jobs that are really non-productive. And think if they were you productive, we'd have a five-hour work week if all those people <laughs> were out there having real jobs. We could have full employment, full profit. President, my foot. You're running for president, Rob. <laughs> okay. You're gonna get your butt out there. You and Jesse Ventura and Alex Jones. Run on. Hey, what's your name, brother? Rob. Both Rob. you guys are named Rob. Yeah. Call Rob. Rob. Hell yeah. yeah. Just call me Rob too. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> We're all getting robbed. Why? Why not? Rob, right? Yeah. I like that. Make it right. All right, you guys. Have a great day. Part of that Talk to you. It was a pleasure meeting you guys. This is your mind opening. Thank you. That was really mind opening for me too, Rob. God Rob. bless you guys, man. Yeah, I like Stay you. safe. Right. Well, I got an impromptu uh, interview there with a couple of guys and uh, kind of used up my tape. But, you know, it was very enjoyable to meet these guys off the cuff and uh, just come up and start talking to me. and. Uh, we come from a similar generation. Rob had a few years on me, but uh, you know we could relate to a time when it, it appeared America had hope. You know, and our, that hope was taken away from us uh, by these uh, these criminals at the top. And they really are, uh, you know, there's there's not harsh enough words to you know describe these people. And their fruits are the evidence. So I'm not just making stuff up. I'm not condemning them. I'm not judging. I'm just saying that these people are a mean gaggle of ruthless thugs by their behavior. That's how they're behaving. So, you know, we need to reach these people. Remember, you and I are the boss. We're the animal trainers. We just have to figure out a way to get up close and personal and reach these people. In some way, we've got to convince them to jump ship because it's before it's too late, because it is all coming down and you can't stop it. Information keeps growing. The evildoers keep getting exposed. People are gaining true higher education, true accurate information they're getting uh, about things like the most important things about economics. <laughs> they're understanding things like capitalism and 
supply and demand. And they want an explanation. They want accountability. They want to know why things don't get better. You know, why the price of this commodity goes up when there's, you know, more of it than ever before in history. They want to know how, you know, why that, you know, the system justifies us being ripped off, robbed, you know, seven ways from Sunday. So, <coughs> I guess lastly today, I'm sorry I've been so long-winded, would be, you know, take it easy on yourself with, um, you know, your frustrations. It, it's good. If you, if, you, if you hate your life in this world and you don't like this system, you're really on the right track. You know, try not to beat yourself up. Try to live free and secure and prosperous as best you can. Treat your fellow man with dignity and respect and, you know, see them as your brother or your sister. This is the right, proper thing to do. This will bring us happiness. And, you know, doing the other will not bring us happiness. Caring about 